Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today I've headed into Dollar Tree, Home Depot, Goodwill, and Hobby Lobby to pick up some supplies for spring and Easter DIYs. Thank you to Essential Stencils for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get crafting. Jumping into this first DIY, I picked up this little sign from Hobby Lobby on clearance, and I decided that at first, my plan was a little bit different, so it kind of shifts in this whole project, but I started by painting it white. Then I realized, you know what? I bet I could probably just sand these letters off and I wanted to try that. So that is what I did and it actually turned out looking really nice after I sanded it. From there, I ended up taking a fat quarter that I found at Walmart that had all these cute bunnies on it and I wanted to use this um, instead of painting it or putting scrapbook paper down or staining it or what have you down onto this little, I'm just going to call it a tray, uh, tray. <laughs> and so I took the fabric and what I ended up doing was setting it on top of it and then taking a pencil and just kind of loosely drawing the outline of this. And then I cut out that circle and continued just to trim it here and there, placing it down on the little tray and then pulling it up and trimming here and there until I got the fabric circle to fit. To get the fabric circle attached, I took some spray adhesive. Now, my preferred uh, spray adhesive is the Gorilla Glue one. I absolutely love that one because it's repositionable yet super sturdy, but I had this one from Hobby Lobby. And so that is what I used. And I just sprayed that all over my wood round. And then I placed my fabric down on top and just smoothed it out. For the base of this cake stand, display stand, whatever you want to call it, I grabbed some of this folk art paint in the color Fire Coral, and I'm painting this candlestick that I had picked up from Goodwill quite a while ago, made it look like this, and now I'm just reusing it again. I painted it until it got full coverage, but this color matched exactly the little bunny flowers on my fabric, so I was kind of excited about that. Then on the tray, I decided the silver, I don't know, I wasn't really loving the corrugated silver around it. It was just kind of, I don't know what it was. It just, I didn't like it. So I took some of this lace that came from Hobby Lobby that I had in my stash and I tacked it down. I hot glued it, wrapped it around and then tacked it in another spot just to kind of break up all that silver. After looking at the candlestick, I realized, you know what? It's too coral. I need to break that up. So I took my fan brush and some white paint and I distressed it to kind of break up all that color, the coral, sorry. And then I really liked how it looked after I did that. And the last step here is to just get this base attached to the tray. I'm just using the Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive. I prefer this over E6000 because I feel like it works faster and I don't know, it just, it works faster. That's the main reason. And once that was done and it set overnight for 24 hours, this tray was ready to be used in spring and Easter decor. Next up, I grabbed this eight pack of coasters from Goodwill for $2.99. I took it outside and spray painted it with some heirloom white spray paint. Now for this DIY, I'm gonna be using one of the things that Essential Stencils sent me. They sent me some stencil brushes, some rub-on transfers that are absolutely gorgeous, along with a two pack of stencils and then a sign stencil. And I'm gonna kind of give you some hacks for using stencils. This is a great option, especially if you don't have a Cricut, but even if you do, it's always fun just to use an easy stencil. So for these rub-ons, this came in a two pack and y'all, the designs were amazing. I absolutely fell in love with these. They're simple to use. You just cut around your design and then you place it down on your item. So for me, it's putting on the coaster. It adhered really nicely. As far as rubbing it on there, I found that I didn't have to press super hard as long as I made sure to hit the edges and swipe over the entire design. As far as peeling back the little transfer paper that's on it, the design stuck perfectly. There was no like me peeling it and being like, oh gosh, I got to put it back down and rub it some more. Absolutely not. These are very high quality. And I decided that I was only going to make four coasters because I want to use more of these in my spring decor. The last step is to seal these coasters with some type of water-based sealer. You can use a polycrylic or I'm just going to use some matte Mod Podge. And then these coasters are ready to go. All of the items I'm using from Essential Stencils will be linked down below in the description box. They've also given me a 30% off code. Definitely check out their website if you love to work with stencils and rub-on transfers. They've got some really awesome stuff. And I have to say, these are super high quality. I'm so impressed with them. My life 
was great till you added colors. Next up, you're gonna head to Home Depot and find yourself a wood round. We're gonna make a Lazy Susan. Home Depot has two different sizes, the smaller size, and then of course this larger circle that you can pick up. And you'll need to grab yourself some of the Lazy Susan six inch hardware. I started by taking my wood round. I did give it a light sanding on the top. And then again, using that fire coral paint, I am giving it a good coat of paint. I grabbed the Grow and Grace two pack stencils for the Lazy Susan and it was kind of just me trying to decide, okay, which one of these do I want to actually use? And I ended up going with the consider how the wildflowers grow. And I started by taking that stencil and then just taping it down with some painter's tape onto my wood round once I got it positioned. And then I used the stencil brush and some white paint and I started to stencil. Now, when you're using a stencil, remember you want to dab. You wanna go up and down. You don't wanna go side to side, swipey swipey. You wanna go up and down because that, if you swipe side to side or paint, on the stencil, that is how you can get some bleeding and you definitely don't want that. So I just stenciled it on and once it was done, I was a very quick and easy pull up and I was good to go. Now we need to attach the Lazy Susan hardware. So you wanna go ahead and mark and just make sure you get this nice and center of your circle. It was six inches kind of all the way around to hit the hardware. As far as the hardware, you can kind of see there's two different size circles on each piece where I'm marking. Those are the smaller circles. That's the one you wanna actually attach to the wood. The other one, you can kind of see the circles are in the corners. You take some wood screws and screw in your hardware. Now you've got to put some type of pad on this. I used to put felt pads on these uh, when I, because I make these Lazy Susans all the time as gifts. They are a really awesome gift idea. But I found that sometimes they would slide and they wouldn't hold very well. And then I found these kind of gripper pads at Home Depot. So definitely recommend these over the felt pads, but either one will work. And then the last step is you definitely want to seal this with some type of polyacrylic. I just use a clear matte Rust-Oleum polyacrylic spray. Once that's done, it's ready to go. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you guys know that I tend to do a lot of s'mores type projects, especially around Christmas time. And then last spring I did the Dollar Tree wooden dice into little s'mores. So I knew I wanted to do some type of Easter s'mores. I've actually been working on an idea that involves clay, but I haven't quite gotten it to work yet. So now I'm doing a Dollar Tree version. I saw a picture of someone who made a little bunny s'more and I thought, okay, I can use some Dollar Tree supplies and do that. So starting with a little Dollar Tree wood plank, I cut it in half using, I kind of started with my miter shears, but this one is a little bit thick and it goes a lot faster. I just use my 10 snips to snip it in half. And then I took some of that restore colored paint that I talk about all the time. I painted it on and then used a baby wipe to wipe it off to kind of give it more of that graham cracker color. Then taking some fawn colored chalk paint by Waverly, I use that to do the graham cracker detail on my two pieces of wood. Now the bunny tail needed to be reattached because it was up too high and I wanted it to kind of stick out a little bit better underneath the graham cracker. So I just re hot glued that down to the bunny. Then I took four tumbling tower blocks that were stained from a previous project, but then I painted them with some truffle Waverly chalk paint. You don't need to do this step uh, because I'm gonna end up using some brown hot glue to kind of cover those up and make it look like melted chocolate anyway. If you don't have brown hot glue, then probably definitely wanna paint these to represent the chocolate. You're gonna hot glue these four tumbling tower blocks down to your uh, piece of wood and then glue the bunny on top of the little tumbling tower pieces. Take that last little graham cracker piece, glue that to the top of the bunny. Then you wanna take your brown hot glue and glue all the way around. You wanna work just one side at a time because if you just cover up the tumbling tower blocks and then rotate to the next side, trust me, if the glue's not set, it will start to ooze out. So just kinda of let it set up before you move to the next side. Everything again in today's video will be linked down below. So if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. But there you go, you've got yourself a s'mores bunny. Take me away, I want you for myself every single day You set my world on fire You set my world on fire
For this one, I grabbed a wood round that I had in my stash that I believe originally came from Amazon and I painted it with some black paint and then I grabbed that other grow and gray stencil and decided to use that on this one. Now, here's a hack about stencils. Just because the stencil looks like this doesn't mean you actually have to use the full design. So when you have a stencil, don't just think, oh, that's the only design I can get out of it because you can look at a stencil and say, oh, I only want to use the words from this or, oh, I only want to use the flowers. So you can get multi uses out of a stencil and have a ton of different designs with just one stencil, if that makes sense. And that's what I'm doing here. So it took me a minute to figure out what I wanted to do, but I decided in the end that I wanted to use the words. I wanted to use the leaves and I guess just the actual little line of the circle going around, but the flowers, I decided instead of stenciling those, I was going to attach some, some flowers that I got from Hobby Lobby with some hot glue. So same process, I taped down my stencil, I stenciled the areas that I wanted, I put tape in the areas that I didn't want, and then I went back in and hot glued down those flowers. You could add a hanger to this if you wanted to, you could add greenery, you could have gone in and done multicolors, you know, if you wanted to do the leaves green, maybe you made the sign white instead and did a different color, but lots of options. I just decided to kind of use it as a piece that you could set in a stand and just put on your counter, but I absolutely love how it turned out. So just remember when you look at a stencil, just because it's one design, you actually can get a ton of different design uses out of one stencil. For this porch sign, I will be using the It's Good To Be Home three foot stencil from Essential Stencils and I will be using a clearance sign from Hobby Lobby again. So I started by spray painting over the word grocery on my sign and then again taping down my stencil and opted just to use all black paint. Now there were bees on this. I thought about maybe working in yellow but I decided to use all black. Once that was stenciled on I found some really cute bee buttons at Hobby Lobby and decided just to add those for a little accent. There was a ton of B stuff that you definitely could work into signs if you want some 3D elements, but I just kind of added these for a little pop of color. And then you want to seal this if you're going to put it outside. I'm actually going to leave it inside, kind of right by my front door. And then that's it. This porch sign is ready to go. My life was great till you added colors. Like the moon is the snow. And there you go, a round of spring and Easter DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite. Also, let me know what is your favorite kind of go-to stencil. Do you like to get stencils for sign, like word signs? Do you like to have letter stencils? Like what is your preferred stencil? I'd love to know. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. My heart's I just want to love you too.